Commuting into London today from Hertfordshire are first on mainland trains. At St Pancras, look, no hands. A computer is now driving this Thameslink train underneath central London. In the future, it'll mean much more frequent services, part of a £7 billion Thameslink upgrade and be another option to the Northern Line. We're constrained by existing lines that we have at the moment. Um, our intention is to increase the capacity of, of the rails by effectively squeezing more trains into the existing tracks that we've got. Um, this type of technology is exactly how we do that. We're able to move the trains closer together safely um, and therefore increase the capacity of the amount of trains that can run through a section. Everything in fact to make it one of the most up-to-date commuter routes in the world. Automatic train operation has worked on the Victoria line since 1968. It's currently used on five underground lines. Trains are controlled centrally. They still have drivers on board to carry out safety checks and to close the doors. On Thameslink, commuters have complained about the new train's hard seats and a lack of tables. And the RMT union is concerned this technology is another step in making the railways faceless. The operator, though, says the trains will be able to run much closer together between St Pancras and Blackfriars. This is trailblazing. This is the first practical realisation of the digital railway. This is in-cab signalling, operating automatically and a critical part of the network. This is linking Sussex to the East Coast Main Line. It's linking Kent to the Midland Main Line. It's bringing new destinations, new travel opportunities, the ability to travel on one train from Cambridge to Brighton for the first time ever, uh, reduces the journey length from Cambridge to Gatwick Airport by 20% and allows from this May a capacity increase of 40,000 extra people per day uh, into central London. This is seen as the first step in a digital railway which will increase capacity. The new system will be fully operational next year. Tom Edwards, BBC London News.